And welcome to another Monkeys on Mondays. I've got with me Abby from Big Fish uh, from PR. Abby, how are you doing today? Not too bad, thank you, Dave. How about you? Yeah, I actually, I'm very well. I have to say, I've only eaten one Easter egg, so I had a little one, a Bourneville dark chocolate, because I love dark chocolate, so I've been quite good, uh, but plenty of exercise, which is nice. So what are you doing to stay um, fit and healthy and active at the moment? Well, I've been doing a few of the obligatory Joe Wicks exercises with the kids. <laughs> um, but my gym, I'm with Nuffield, and they've given us access to the um, Les Mills online. So I've been doing some of those classes as well, which is actually has been really nice because it means I can mix it up a bit and do something completely different. And okay. I'm going out on the bike with the kids as well. Oh, we're, we're pretty lucky, actually. We've got a massive, great sort of rugby field and parkland behind right behind our house so we've been going out there quite often and cycling up and down all the hills and it's amazing to see just how busy it is over there yeah or, and it, it does it does make you realize doesn't it when when you live in nice parts of the world with access to open space the difference it would make to us who are physically active if we didn't have that access so it's that's an interesting point and do you think i'm really interested about this sort of online stuff do you think you'll carry on doing online activity to supplement your gym activity? Or do you think you'll be itching to get back to that uh, that building and all that kit? I'm itching to get back because I'm missing my indoor cycling classes. Right. Really. Now, but that's down to the instructor, 100%. Mm -hmm. So I am itching to get back. And I, I am a person that likes classes. I like to be shouted at, <laughs> told what to do. <laughs> Um, but I think I would. I would definitely still carry on doing some stuff at home. I mean, there's the amount of times, you know, a last minute meeting comes in, you can't get to the gym. Actually, now I probably would go online and do a workout as well. So I don't think it would stop me, but I think I would potentially supplement. OK, good. So a bit of a mixed set of activity. Be really interesting if you actually managed to get yourself a spin bike, if that actually then convinced you to do more. You've got I, access I, to People have been doing that. Um, mm. I know Paul Bedford's got himself a bike and then he's been doing sort of online classes. So, yeah. yeah, it's certainly an option. I have been almost sad I didn't get myself a Peloton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure I'm sad. I think. I, right I think now. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. OK, so what we're talking, Abby, with you guys is, is PR, public relations. So what I want to know is what sort of messages are operators putting out at the moment or should they be putting out at the moment whilst we're in this lockdown period? There's so much going on and actually they're doing a great job. Um, I think that the, the key thing really to say is just keep engaging with your members, make them right. aware that you're there, show that you care, touchy-feely, um, probably mm -hmm. once a week at least get in touch with them. Um, I think it's really important to remember because of course everything's going digital, everything's online, it's, don't forget that still not everybody is online um mm. you know sure that e emails as, as well as even letters there'll be some people that still want to receive a good old-fashioned letter just to show that you're thinking of them yeah it's really interesting i saw um a video of a of an operator who's um instructor who works in gp referral who was actually ringing their clients every week just to touch base in, in a similar fashion to you just talked about in the letter just literally just ringing people up and finding out how they were i thought it was a really good idea Definitely. One of our clients, Oldham Community Leisure, is doing exactly the same. They've been ringing all of their vulnerable and their exercise on referral patients and, and asking mm -hmm. how they are. And actually, if they're not doing well, they're helping them out. You know, they're going around, they're delivering food parcels. It's really lovely to see. And it must make those people feel that much more connected to their gym and, and that these people truly care about them. So I think that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, I, I think we're starting to show our creative side. Um, in the sector. I think I've I've moaned about this. And I, I moaned the wrong word, but it's been something that's I think we don't challenge ourselves enough. We tend to do things that have worked. We don't think to, to look in the, to do things in a different way. And I think a little bit more empathy, which is something Martin Allison talks about a lot, has made people think differently about their communications. So I think it's a positive thing. Mm. Yes, me yeah. too. Absolutely. It's just showing showing that you care about them. I think one of the key things as, as well is to remind them if they're not paying remind them that they're not paying so it's even more showing isn't it that look you're not paying us at the moment but that's not the point we actually want to integrate and interact with you um mm. some of the gyms i know some of the charities and some of the not-for-profits are still taking payments from those that are willing to give them as donations 
which yeah. I think is important. And even more importantly, then, to keep in touch with them, make sure that they know what a difference that's making and what you're actually doing with those funds, how that's helping you to keep the staff in a job and the small mm. supply that they work with. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I think there's been some really good messages. And if you keep your eye on social media, actually, you're seeing them a lot. So I'm, I'm talking to somebody soon around maintenance uh, and what we should be doing to make sure our buildings are ready to reopen, because obviously they, they might be mothballed for two or three months for all we know. So there's a whole lot we've got to do to make sure buildings are ready. What sort of things do we need to think about from a PR point of view? What can we be planning ready for the lockdown to be released effectively? I think, to be honest, it's probably a bit too soon for that. My personal okay. opinion would be that there is so much that they should be doing now around keeping engaged maybe that's something we can come back to in a couple of weeks time and do mm -hmm. another webinar. um i think i think there's so much they should be doing now it's almost preempting it to start looking at the reopening we want to make sure that right. people are engaged and actually if you do a really really good job of engaging them now they're far more likely to be coming back um mm -hmm. so you know, there's all sorts of things that you can be, be doing asking them to share with you what they're doing to keep it what are they struggling with most at the moment about being in lockdown it doesn't have to be around exercise even you know you could start an instagram poll for looking at what they're finding hardest have they tried other classes have they thought about running could you direct them to the couch to 5k or other ways giving them tips on how they can start a new exercise regime um Maybe even run some quiz nights with them. I know a lot of the classes are really sociable anyway. Zumba, for instance, always seems at my gym to have a big crowd of followers. You know, and I think if you run a quiz night for the Zumba team, that would be perfect to keep them in close with your friends. And actually, that way, you might, you know, even if you're talking to people on email by letting them, you're inviting them in to try these new ways, you might actually encourage some people to come online that haven't before. Okay. You mentioned Oldham Community Ledger earlier around the way they were communicating with their um, GP referral customers and, and those types of customers. Have you got any other examples of some of the stuff you've just talked about? Are there any other um, operators that you work with? What are they doing? Yeah, absolutely. Trafford Leisure are doing loads of wonderful stuff as well. Um, they've been putting online classes um, for their customers. They've been ringing up and engaging with their vulnerable people as well. Um, but they, I'm trying to think what it was I was going to say about <laughs> Trafford. <Yeah. laughs> um, I mean, other examples, <laughs> I've seen it outside of Trafford, you've got people volunteering for the NHS. I saw a lovely story, actually, about some leisure centre staff who had been redeployed to work as bin men yep. um, because they work for the council. You know, and that actually made the local papers. So I think these operators should be thinking about their staff as well it isn't just about their members it's talking about their staff what are they up to let let the community know whether that's on your facebook page is a great story make sure that you talk to the newspapers the radio stations everyone has had enough really of the covid story they really want to hear some good news stories about what people are up to going back to oldham again two of their leisure centers are now have now been opened as um food banks so right. they're helping care um, David Lloyd gave all the food from their cafes to the NHS. There's some lovely, lovely examples of what people are doing. Mm. No, I think it's really positive. It, it's really interesting you say that about the bin men. You know, I post most days on LinkedIn and, and, and other social media platforms. But that bin men story has had the most likes, the most comments and the most views of anything that I've done in the past few weeks. It's just incredible. Um, yeah. You're right, it's those good news bits, isn't it? People want the positivity. They want to know what we're doing to, to do things differently and better. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And that people are willing to completely turn their career on its head to go out and try mm. something new to make sure that they're still bringing in the money for their family, that they're, they're actually helping out in the community as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I, one other question that I've got for you is we've talked about lots of different things like telephone calls and letters and things like that. Have you seen any new sort of technology that's come out that's helping people either communicate with their teams or communicate with their customers? Something that's a bit fresh, something that's a bit different? Well, one example is, is a client of ours, our people. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've heard of them, but it, it is all about communicating with people that don't work from a desk. 
So it's an app on yep. your phone it's used by loads and loads of leisure centres, the NHS, Poulton's Park, um, and it enables them to engage with their staff when they're not at their desk. So they send sort of little messages as cards, but it's secure, so you haven't got all the GDPR problems and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Now they actually spent an entire week redeveloping a small version of their app um, that they're offering to the health and fitness industry at 50% discount at the moment, um, but to the NHS and care sector for free, which I think is a lovely, lovely mm -hmm. idea. So last week they were spending hours onboarding 42,000 NHS staff. Oh, wow. Um, and, the, and I think it's important, I think I touched on this before about staff, it's important not just to talk to your members, but also to talk to your staff. So mm. many people I've spoken to, their um, they're staff are all on furlough, even up to managing director level. So, you know, they, they need to know that you care as well, you know, just mm. about them. So it's, it's kind of a nice way of being able to keep in touch with them, let them know what's going on. And as soon as you do have any news about reopening, you can start to bring in the people that need to be brought back to get things moving again yeah it's really interesting because i tried to introduce teams to legionet about six months ago and really struggled um but now we have a monday night quiz at seven o'clock and everybody's <laughs> using teams and yeah. they're using it in ways and, and it's been a really good way of people engaging with it and learning from it and it will make a difference to us going forward so yeah i'm really that that people thing i saw that the nhs piece i thought that was really clever very worthwhile okay yeah. right yeah, just one more thing quickly that I yeah. just remember as well, um, Coach AI, um, uh, sort of AI personal trainer for motivation, they're doing yeah. something similar as well, where they're offering that to um, clubs and centres to give to their members mm -hmm. to help them motivated and stay engaged with exercise. So that's something else that people might want to look into. Absolutely. And of course, um, ActiveNet actually shared that with all of the buyers recently. Oh, um, brilliant. Coach AI. So yeah, we've actually shared that as ActiveNet. So that's brilliant. Right, Abby, you mentioned earlier about maybe coming back a little bit closer to uh, unlockdown day or whatever they're going to call it. So what I'm going to do is say thank you for today. That was really interesting, but we will come back to you and we'll, we'll have a conversation around what we can plan for our PR messages prior Absolutely. to. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. No worries, Abby. Thank you for your time. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you.